The first enzyme regulation mechanism that we're going to focus on will be allosteric regulation. And to demonstrate how this is actually used and how it works inside our cells, let's take a look at a specific type of allosteric enzyme known as aspartate transcarbamoylase. So in this lecture and the next several lectures, we're going to focus on how this enzyme actually works and how it is regulated. So let's begin by discussing the reaction that this enzyme actually catalyzes. So the reaction is shown on the board. We have carbamoyl phosphate that reacts with aspartate. So these are the two substrate molecules to the aspartate transcarbamoylase. And this catalyzes the conversion of these molecules into these two products. We have, orf, uh, we have orthophosphate and we also have the N-carbamoyl aspartate. Now, the first question you might be thinking is, what's the big deal with this reaction? What is the physiological significance of this reaction inside our body? Well, as it turns out, this reaction is actually the first step in the very long biological synthesis of nitrogenous bases, pyrimidine bases. And the pyrimidines are actually used to produce the pyrimidine-based nucleotide triphosphates, for instance, the citidine triphosphates, or simply CTP. So, the ultimate result of this reaction is the production of this CTP molecule. And so, this can be seen in the following reaction pathway. So, we have the carbamoyl phosphate reacts with the aspartate in the presence of this enzyme to produce the N-carbamoyl aspartate as well as, that as, as well as that orthophosphate. And then these products react many, many, many times to ultimately form that cytidine triphosphate. And these nucleoside triphosphates are basically used to produce, to build DNA molecules inside our body. So, this reaction is a pretty big deal. Now, the question is, how do we know that this enzyme is in fact an allosteric enzyme? How do we know that there exists a biological molecule inside our body that is used to basically control the activity of this enzyme? Well, uh, the first evidence that this is an allosteric enzyme came from early studies that basically showed that the rate of formation of this and carbamoyl aspartate depends on the concentration of this final product, the CTP. And this is described in the following graph. So we have the y-axis is the rate of formation of the n carbamoyl aspartate. And the x-axis is the concentration of this final product in this reaction here, the CTP, the cytidine triphosphate. So what this curve basically shows us, what the, uh, what the blue curve tells us is, when inside our cells we have a low concentration of cytidine triphosphate, the rate of formation of this intermediate will be relatively high. And so what that implies is the activity of the ATCase, that aspartate transcarbamoylase, will also be high. But as we increase the concentration of a CTP, as we produce more and more CTP, and in fact, once our cell's concentration of CTP is plentiful, we're going to see that somewhere here, if we look at the rate of formation of this molecule, it will be much lower than in this particular case. And so what that implies is, as the concentration of CTP increases, it somehow goes back to this reaction here and affects the activity of this ATCase because ultimately it's the ATCase that controls the rate of this reaction, of the production of this intermediate and carbamoyl aspartate. Now, the question is, where exactly does the CTP molecule actually bind to on the ATCase? Well, can the CTP bind onto the active site of this enzyme? 
The only way to bind onto the active site is if the CTP actually resembles, has the same structure as either aspartate or carbamoyl phosphate. And we know that the structure of this looks nothing like the structure of either of these two substrates. And so what that, uh, what that means is the CTP to actually inhibit the activity of ATCase, it must bind onto some other side other than the active side. And those sites, as we said previously, are known as allosteric sites, regulatory sites. So we see that in this biological synthesis of CTP, it's the end product, it's the CTP itself that goes back to the beginning, to the first step in the reaction and inhibits the activity of this aspartate transcarbamoylase. And we know from basic biology that this type of pathway is known as the negative feedback loop or negative feedback inhibition. And this CTP molecule is known as an allosteric inhibitor of this enzyme. And that's how we know that this enzyme is controlled allosterically inside our cells. So once again, these results suggest that the end product of the ATCase initiated reaction must bind onto and inhibit the activity of that aspartate transcarbamoylase. And this is known as negative feedback inhibition. Now, since the structure of the CTP, the citidine triphosphate, is nothing like the structure of these substrate molecules, that means this molecule does not bind to the active site, but it binds to some other regulatory site known as the allosteric site. And because it inhibits the activity of that enzyme, we call the CTP an allosteric inhibitor to this enzyme here. So we see that at low concentrations of the cytogene triphosphate in our cells, there is not enough CTP to actually bind onto the ATCase, and so the activity of ATCase will be high, and the rate of production of the N-carbamoyl aspartate will also be high, and this is shown in the following curve. At low concentrations of CTP somewhere here, the rate of production will be high somewhere here. But as we increase the concentration of CTP, the rate will drop. And that's because now we have ample amount of CTP and some of them will go back and bind onto this enzyme, basically inhibit that enzyme and that decreases the rate of production of this intermediate molecule. And that makes sense because if we have abundant amounts of CTP, we do not want to waste energy and produce this intermediate molecule. And so that's exactly why we limit the production of n carbamoyl aspartate by controlling the activity of this enzyme allosterically. Now, before we actually go into our discussion of the structure of this enzyme, the final thing that I'd like to focus on in this lecture is the fact that aspartate transcarbamoylase observes cooperative behavior. So, like most allosteric enzymes, ATCase actually exhibits cooperativity. And so what that means is the binding to one side affects the binding affinity of the other sides on that same enzyme. And if we graph the relationship between the rate at which we produce this product molecule, the n carbamoyl aspartate, with respect to the concentration of the substrate, the aspartate, as shown in this diagram, we're going to see not the typical michaelis menten curve, but we're going to see the sigmoyl S-shaped curve. And that's because this enzyme and allosteric enzymes in general observe cooperative behavior. Now, what do we mean by cooperative behavior? So let's think back to hemoglobin. So when we discussed hemoglobin, we discussed what it means for an enzyme or a protein to behave in a cooperative fashion. So in our discussion on hemoglobin, we said that hemoglobin behaves cooperatively because it consists of different subunits and so it has different active sites. It has more than one active site. It has more than one site to which the oxygen actually binds to. 
And so because of that, every time an oxygen binds onto one of the sites, it basically creates a conformational change in the structure of that enzyme and that induces, it increases the affinity of the other sites for that same substrate, for that oxygen molecule. And so what that implies is the reason ATCase exhibits cooperative behavior is because it consists of multiple subunits and those subunits must have additional active sites. And so when one of those active sites is filled with a substrate molecule such as the aspartate, the other active sites become much more likely to actually bind to that substrate molecule. That's why we have this sigmoidal curve. So this cooperative behavior implies that ATCase must consist of multiple subunits and hence multiple active sites. It has multiple active sites. As a substrate binds onto one of those active sites, it changes the affinity of the other active sites for that substrate molecule. And this is due to the interaction between the different subunits. And we'll discuss much more why this actually takes place and how they interact with one another when we discuss the structure of this enzyme. So in the next lecture, we're going to focus on the structure, the three-dimensional shape, and the subunits that are found inside the aspartate transcarbamoylase or ATCase allosteric enzyme.